Okay, so I was out in the Fells on Sunday and took this observation on a maple leaf viburnum. You can see some ants here and something else you might be able to see if you look a little more closely up towards the top up near the flower stalk is there are some other organisms up, up there and probably recognize those as aphids. Um, so today I'm going to talk about ant aphid mutualism. Um, a lot of people probably know about this. Ants, uh, uh, some ants tend to aphids um, in return for food. Um, so mutualism is a relationship that's beneficial to both organisms involved. It's a type of symbiosis. Um, and ant mutualism in general is ver a very, very important ecological force. Um, ant colonies are large and very adaptable since they have so many individuals involved in them. Um, and it's such an ecological phenomenon that uh, symbiosis with ants has a specific term for it. It's myrmecophily, or you call it a myrmecophile, um, an organism that is a symbiont with an ant colony. Um, all kinds of things do this, from aphids, to plants, many plants uh, have symbiosis with ant colonies, especially in uh, tropical rainforests and stuff like that. Um, and ant plant symbiosis are, is actually the reason for the first known uh, discovery of a vegetarian spider. Oh. There, um, so as you may know, some trees, um, in this case, acacia trees, um, secrete honeydew, much like aphids do, as, we, as we'll get to early on. And this is such a common phenomenon that there is a species of spider that depends on free riding on this mutualistic relationship and taking the energy from the tree that is meant for the ants. So the protection and the, the uh, services, sort of, that the ants provide to the tree is strong enough that the tree is providing so much back that other organisms can benefit from this mutual relationship between them. That's how powerful a force um, ant mutualism can be ecologically in general. So powerful that it creates a new niche for spiders. So ant aphid mutualism, which is one of the more common ant mutualisms we can see around here, um, is a little less convoluted than this crazy relationship. Um, so aphids have access to something that ants don't. Um, their mouth parts allow them to feed on the sap of many different plants, and ants with their big mandibles just can't do that. So these aphids uh, are able to provide food, being the sugars from the sap of the plants, to ants. They secrete this thing called honeydew from glands on their abdomens, um, which the ants can then consume. And you can see two ants here, uh, either tending to or consuming honeydew from these aphids. And you can actually see two different aphid species on this single leaf. So ants uh, can be kind of generalists in terms of the symbiosis too. It's not necessarily one ant species and one aphid species. It's more a general behavior of ants usually um, that they can tend to and benefit from these aphid colonies. And what ants offer in return is mostly protection. Um, aphids are relatively defenseless. They're not very mobile against uh, these predators that they have, things like uh, ladybugs, things like that. Um, some aphids uh, have a different technique. Some, some make kind of like a woolly, the colony kind of makes a woolly casing, so it's harder for, for predators to get to them. Um, but having these big formidable ants defending you is just as viable a solution for protection. And so this relationship, uh, there's been a lot of evolution around it, and there are a lot of unique behaviors to this relationship that you can see. It's not just a kind of coincidental ant walks by, notices honeydew on an aphid, and thinks that looks like a good meal. Sorry, I got a train passing right now. 
just wait a quick second. So they've discovered that um, aphids actually exhibit some behaviors uh, interacting with the resident kind of ant protectors um, and symbionts. Um, aphids when they, and this is the mechanism for how an aphid decides to do this is, an, uh, is a little more complicated, but aphids will often kind of raise their abdomens as an indication that an ant should come and feed on this honeydew. And a lot of these mutualist aphids, if they are left unattended, there will be an excess of honeydew, which can create some sort of bad environment that's vulnerable to things like fungi or bacteria or something like that, that can infect the aphid colony and be harmful to it. So these aphids have evolved with ants long enough that they are dependent on ants to kind of maintain a certain level of honeydew by consuming the honeydew that the aphids produce. Um, and there are even more base behaviors uh, that are affected by this mutualistic relationship. Aphid colonies um, that are in a mutualistic relationship with ants, even in the same species, um, have a slower response to an aphid stress pheromone um, than colonies of the same species that are not, uh, not involved with an ant colony themselves. Um, so a lot of really complex be behaviors involved in this symbiosis. Um, ant mutualism is such an important thing to, to aphids ecologically in general um, that on the Wikipedia page for aphids, it's the first ecological relationship you talk about before you even talk about predation. Um, it's, it's just really important for the lifestyle of aphids, and it's one of the more remarkable lifestyle ad adaptations of aphids. You can see here an ant guarding its aphids. Um, and another uh, behavior that ants exhibit in kind of return, or it's, since it's a mutualistic relationship, it's not just, um, it benefits the ants too, obviously, but ants bring aphid eggs sometimes into their colonies to overwinter um, so that they can bring the eggs back out in the spring and start a new aphid colony, which they'll associate with. So here's just a little review of, the, um, of some cool academic papers about this relationship, this one about the communication, kind of behavioral adaptations of the aphids to stimulate ant feeding on the honeydew. Again, kind of describing the uh, ant protection behaviors, preying on predators like ladybirds, um, and also sheltering the eggs. And this is the study about the alarm pheromone um, where aphids respond less, um, they have a less extreme response to this stress pheromone. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's ant aphid symbiosis, one of many cool symbioses that uh, ants exhibit with many different species and a cool thing to observe that you can observe out in the field right now.